now try to assign the priorities for the substituents around this stereo center. Well, we'll start by putting in our dots to show that the initial atoms that we're uh, comparing, the four atoms directly connected to the stereo center. But those are all carbons, so we have a four-way tie. So now we have to make a list of the three atoms that each of our dotted atoms are connected to. Well, now we have some new issues, because this is an example where we have double and triple bonds. How can we deal with that? How should we treat this double bond to oxygen? Well, the rule is that you should treat a double bond like two separate bonds. So when I see that this carbon has a double bond to oxygen, I just treat that as two bonds to two oxygens. Oxygen, oxygen. So that's how we're going to treat this double bond. Since the carbon is double bonded to the oxygen, I'm going to write an oxygen down twice. And where is the third thing that the carbon is attached to? This hydrogen. As usual, we have to write the list from best to worst. So you can't put the hydrogen on top, you've got to put the oxygens on top. Previously, I've already emphasized that when you make your list, you should always be listing exactly three atoms that the dotted atom is connected to. Well, you might have had some worries about that here, because it doesn't look like this atom is connected to three further atoms. Um, but you can see that the way we get around that is, again, by treating the double bond um, as two separate bonds. That allows us to have our constant pattern of making a list of three things that the dotted atom is connected to. Well, now you should be able to figure out how to make a list for the carbon on the right. What are the three things that this carbon is attached to? Well, we'll treat the double bond to carbon as two separate carbons. Carbon. Since the dotted atom is double bonded to a carbon, we'll write two carbons down, and the third atom is a hydrogen. How about the carbon at the bottom? What are the three atoms that it's attached to? It's attached to an oxygen, a nitrogen, and a hydrogen. Now make sure you write those from best to worst. The best priority is the oxygen, then the nitrogen, because oxygen has a higher atomic number than nitrogen. Check that in your periodic table if you weren't sure about that. And then the lowest atomic number in the list would be the hydrogen. Now let's try listing three atoms for the carbon on the left. Well, here we have a triple bond, but now you may have figured out how to deal with the triple bond now that you've seen how we dealt with the double bond. Um, since this is triple bonded to the carbon, we're simply going to treat that as three separate bonds to carbon. And then the list is carbon, carbon, carbon. And that allows us to, again, keep up our usual pattern that whenever we list these atoms, we should always be able to list three atoms that the dotted atom is connected to. Well, by treating this triple bond as three separate bonds, we're able to pretend that this is bonded to three separate carbons, and that allows us to keep up our pattern. Now we have to decide uh, the priorities, and we look for the first point of difference, as usual. First point of difference. Uh, well, first of all, now we can uh, split these into two groups. We can see that the top and the bottom substituents are going to beat the left and the right substituents. Their first point of difference is at the first atom. So notice that on the bottom list, we have an oxygen, and on the top list, we also start with an oxygen. But on the left-hand list, we start with a carbon, and on the right-hand list, we start with a carbon. So the top and the bottom are going to be number one and number two. So let's just focus on the top and the bottom and decide which is better. Well, what's the first point of difference between the top substituent and the bottom substituent? They're tied at the first atom. The first atom is an oxygen for both of them. Well, we can break the tie at the second atom. The second atom in this list is an oxygen, but the second atom in this list is a nitrogen. Again, on your periodic table, oxygen has a higher atomic number than nitrogen, so this substituent at the top has the best priority, number one priority, and then this substituent must be the number two priority. 
Now we have to compare the substituents on the right and on the left. What's the first point of difference between them? Well, they're tied at the first two atoms in the list. The first atom in this list is a carbon, the first atom in this list is a carbon, the first uh, and also in the second atom. The second atom in the right-hand list is a carbon, and the second atom in the left-hand list is a carbon. We can now break the tie, though, when we look at the third atoms in the list, because on the left, the third atom in the list is a carbon, and on the right, the third atom in the list is a hydrogen. Carbon beats hydrogen. So this left-hand substituent has the better priority. That means the left-hand substituent is the number three priority, and that leaves the lowest priority for the right-hand substituent. That's going to be the number four priority, and now we've assigned all four priorities. So the big lesson of this example is how to deal with double and triple bonds. We treat a double bond as two separate bonds to the atom, and we treat a triple bond as three separate bonds. And that allows us to keep up our usual pattern of uh, being able to always make a list of three atoms that the dotted atom is connected to. And as usual, once again, I've tried to illustrate what I think is a good notation for doing these types of problems. Dotting the atoms you're comparing, and then physically writing down the list of three atoms for each of the dotted atoms so we can then compare them. At this point, we've covered the basic ideas for how to determine the priorities around the stereo center. Now, we have not gone through some of the hardest cases for determining priorities. I've been giving you some pretty easy problems. Um, there are some cases where it is more difficult to determine the priorities than the examples that I've been giving you, but that's not what I want to go over right now. I think we've gone over enough about the priorities to be able to determine the priorities for most problems. So what I'd like to go on to now is just to dive into how to determine R or S. So the next thing we're going to do is how to determine, after you've found the priorities, whether the molecule is R or S. And then later in this series of videos, after we've gone over the basic ideas behind R and S, then we'll just start shooting um, a whole bunch of examples at you. And some of those examples will include cases um, where it's more difficult to determine all the priorities. Um, so if you're interested in getting those more advanced problems right, hopefully um, you'll watch those later videos as well.